everybody. Mwah. Are you sweet? What do you smell? Want some coffee? Smell that. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have been invited by Homesteaders of Indiana to talk about why rabbits are a really great addition to your homestead. So for Jameson and me, we actually started out our rabbits um, for kind of two reasons, but then it evolved into like so many more. First reason being, I really missed them. I used to raise rabbits when I was a kid, um, all the way from when I was like 11 to 18, when I had to go to college, I had to sell my whole herd of Dutch rabbits, but I was so into it. Um, I had my own breeding line even as a teenager and I just loved it so much. I loved taking care of them and I just miss them. There's something about um, rabbit breeding culture. There's so many friendly people out there um, and there's just always something that you're learning. And the second reason is that I was actually really into raw dog food last year, um, creating it uh, based on something called NRC guidelines. Um, which is basically a way of saying that I'm a nerd <laughs> when it comes to my dogs. My little German Shepherd mix, Aria, has a lot of digestive problems and um, she does really, really well on homemade diets. We typically have issues um, with chicken a lot with her um, and it's just really a dietary intolerance thing. It doesn't mean that she's allergic to it, it just means that she um, has digestive upset with it. So last year I was thinking we need a clean protein source that is feasible because a lot a lot of the meats that I was buying last year they were just so expensive we were trying to buy in bulk a lot of the time for the dogs um, and so that kind of really pushed us over into the edge of we're gonna actually get the rabbits so rabbits are really a great way to start homesteading on a smaller scale especially us being in town we live on 0.4 acres and um, so we have a we have a decent sized backyard, but we can't have livestock. We can't have pigs, we can't have cows. So for us, we have started with rabbits and now we have our first litter of grow outs. Um, well, they're all hiding right now, but they're, they were hopping around in there earlier. We breed silver fox rabbits and they are a great breed. So for us, the general purpose when we first started was to have our own little sustainable source of meat. So if you wanna start out with a trio of meat rabbits, that is what most people do. So a trio of rabbits is a buck and two does. I like to buy them unrelated. Um, it's just easier to start out and keep your lines, I guess, more disperse if you buy unrelated rabbits um, and that's what I do that's my personal preference let's talk about why rabbits for meat a trio of rabbits can produce up to 240 pounds of meat on average annually I'm gonna show you how I came to this number say you breed your buck to both of your does on January 1st both of your does kindle or give birth on February 1st rabbit gestation is typically 31 days long once your does first litters are between five and six weeks old, you can rebreed them and slowly wean off your kits over a one to two week period. By eight weeks, your first litter should be reaching close to five pounds ideally. If they're not, you're gonna wanna breed for bigger rabbits, but let's just say they're all five pounds by eight weeks. After harvesting and dressing out all 16 of those young rabbits, you should end up with about three pounds of dressed weight per rabbit. Times that by 16 and you have 48 pounds of meat to go into your freezer by the end of March. Shortly after that, your does will kindle again and the cycle continues. Rabbits can have up to five litters a year, so if we take that average of 48 pounds freezer weight for the combined litters your does have and times it by five, you end up with approximately 240 pounds of meat per year just from that trio. This number can double or more if you reserve all of the does from the first litters that you have because those does could potentially have two litters each that year as well. That is a lot of meat. So keep in mind, um, this is an ideal schedule. You don't want to braid your does to death. Um, so with us, we'll probably do four litters of doe this year, but on to the next use and that is pelts. And this kind of goes hand in hand with um, if you have meat rabbits and you don't want to waste anything save their pelts because their pelts are so awesome. I'm gonna show you guys a harlequin pelt that I tanned last year and um, keep in mind, I had no experience at all with tanning pelts before I did this one. 
Um, I just followed a whole bunch of like tutorials on YouTube, but it was a lot of fun learning how to do it. And now I have this like really cool little placemat for my MacBook to sit on on my desk. And that, I mean, to me, that's really cool. So there's so many uses for pelts. You can make hats, you can make mittens, gloves, you can make blankets. I have seen some of the coolest huge patchwork blankets made with rabbit fur and they're just gorgeous. I love them. That's another thing that you can sell and kind of just make some more money on your homestead. But if you're into like crafting stuff, you'll definitely want to take advantage of the free fur and leather that they provide after you butcher them. If you're more on the crafty side and you don't necessarily want to have to butcher a rabbit, um, but you still want rabbits and you still want them uh, to be useful for you, I would actually consider maybe getting into Angora rabbits. Angora rabbits provide this really awesome wool when they're molting, or you can shear them like a sheep. You can harvest their wool and you can have a yarn spinner or a wool spinner, I think that's what they're called, um, and you can spin your own yarn. Super cool. When they're molting, you just gently pluck it out of them and you use the plucked fur and just spin it into yarn fibers and then you can make anything that you can knit or crochet with, you can make with rabbit wool. I think that is one of the coolest things ever. And my mom crochets. I've been thinking about getting Angora rabbits, but I'm not sure I could handle them. <laughs> There's a lot of grooming involved, so don't get into Angora rabbits unless you know that you can handle the grooming also. But a very cool use from a very unique breed of rabbit. The next thing that I'm gonna talk about is universal. If you have rabbits, use their compost. Use their poop. Do not waste rabbit poop. It is gold for your garden. Rabbit poop is considered a cold fertilizer and that just means it doesn't need to be aged to put into your garden. It won't burn your plants. It won't um, do anything harmful to them. So you can literally take it from underneath their tray or their cage or whatever you have them in and you can just throw it onto the garden and till it into the soil and you're good. And your plants will thank you. Don't waste rabbit poop. It is even good for your yard. If you, if you don't even have a garden, just put it into your yard. It will make your yard better. So guys, the bottom line to this whole video is no matter what the purpose of your homestead is, if it's meat, if it's fur or crafts or gardening, you could definitely use a rabbit or two. They are just awesome little animals um, and they're just really fun to have and take care of. And I just really like them. Um, they're just quiet. They fit on any size property and they're just awesome. So if you're thinking about starting up a homestead or you already have a homestead and you don't have rabbits, start with them because they are really, really cool little animals. So thank you so much for Homesteaders of Indiana for asking me to create this video. And I hope this was helpful to you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.